And I know I have very good friends who actually changed denominations simply because they felt that the Catholic Church was the last place that would give in to changing the 2,000 years of teaching on human sexuality, especially when it comes to same-sex attraction. And he's saying, you know what? I've been speaking to my Protestant friends, I've been my family, getting them, them to be more open to the idea of maybe coming to the Catholic Church just to sit there and see what it's all about. And he said, this just blew the whole thing wide open. And he mm. said, and for me, I now am having second thoughts about being a Catholic. We are here with Paul Darrow, a man who is an amazing witness of living a chaste life with same-sex attraction. But Paul, that wasn't always the case, correct? Absolutely not. For decades, my life was about living and embracing the gay lifestyle. And I never thought about God, religion, or chastity. So yes, this is quite a different scenario. And you can hear all about Paul's conversion in uh, Desire of the Everlasting Hills. It's amazing. We met a couple years ago, and when Pope Francis allegedly said these things, Paul was the first person I called because, uh, you know, I'm always, I always try to be one that doesn't jump to conclusions, and I wanted to get his opinion. He gave me uh, some wise counsel and said, let's wait till the death settles, and we have. So here now today we're going to speak about what's come out and uh, really how it's impacted uh, Paul and so many people throughout the world. So, Paul, what's your take on this? <clears throat> yes. Well, thank you for giving me the privilege to uh, be in this video with you. And you know what? The dust has not settled. Mm. Even though there have been, there's been clarification after clarification after clarification, some people saying that things were lost in translation, other people are, are saying that things are taken out of context, and other people are saying that he wasn't even speaking about civil unions. So if this had been the fir very first time that there was confusion uh, regarding, regarding something that our dear Pope said, it wouldn't have such an impact. I don't believe that so many of those things have been so confusing to people like me that it's, it's really had a huge impact. The thorn goes right into our hearts. And when I say a thorn, I mean a thorn that appears to have been dipped in, in a mixture of betrayal, mm. confusion, and, and, a, and actually darkness. Mm. I feel so sorry for so many people. Do you know, to become chaste, 100% chase. I mean, imagine to try to lose 10 pounds. The world knows how hard that is. To give up cigarette smoking for a week, to chase, uh, to um, to fast for Lent. But can you imagine what what it's like to give up what were your deepest and darkest desires? I hope the Pope calls me and asks me to explain something that he might not understand about what I'm saying here. And I hope there's a whole bunch of videos of people trying to explain what I really didn't mean, but I meant every word I said. Yes. Well, Paul, what would you say to those people that are, they, they just heard what you said, and they're like, oh, look at Paul. He's, he's being so repressed, and poor him, and why doesn't he just uh, do whatever he wants and, and live how God made him and all that stuff? What would you say to them? <laughs> Those people are waiting for people like me to trip and fall, and they're <laughs> hoping to see me in a gay bar and take a quick little snapshot of me, but it's never going to happen. And so, yes, I've been chased now for almost 10 years, and the joy that I have is I've never felt more love in the Catholic Church and by Catholics than, than I ever have, and I've never felt happier and had more joy than I have since I, I, I let that purity come into me. You know, the way I'm looking at it is the way I look at a lot of things, and it, it's, it's not what he said. You know, it's like the question with same-sex attraction. People are always asking me, were we born that way? And I always say, you know what? It really doesn't matter, does it? Mm. It really doesn't matter what the Pope meant, and it really doesn't matter how we were born. But what matters is how we deal with where we are now with what we know mm. and what we choose to do. 
Mm. No, we, we really may never know what Pope Francis was thinking when he said those words, but 90, as I told people, 99% of the headlines across the United States and the Western world at least covered it as the Pope endorses same-sex attraction. And so I've looked at all these explanations, and, and what's more, more important to me is what is coming out of Rome now? People are getting phone calls from the Pope. People who have, you know, a couple who have three children through in vitro fertilization. For the Pope to have ministries that are openly against the teachings of the Catholic Church regarding human sexuality. They have catechetical conferences in LA where those are the people who are invited, but nobody from the ministries that I'm familiar with that are seeking chastity get invited to speak. You know, yes, Father the, James Martin gets invited as well. So, yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. You know, the, so, the Pope should be calling, the Pope should be calling Paul Darrow. That's who he should be calling, right? Well, uh, I would love that, but, um, <laughs> and you know, Father James Martin, who, who works in a ministry that regarding same-sex attraction that's pretty much the antithesis of the type of way I look at um, Catholicism and the teachings of Catholicism regarding same-sex attraction. But I actually heard him say, in, in, in an, in an, he was actually elated when he was doing an interview with, uh, with a, a big journalist, a well-known journalist, when he said something like, the Pope just isn't okay with it, he's accepting it. And as, as Father James Martin, who is a consultant to the Secretariat of Communications at the Vatican, he actually said that perhaps this means that the Pope, through his experience within the church, this may have a new doctrine personally have a new jo doctrine for himself about this situation. I paraphrased a little bit, but only a little bit right. And so this is what my friends and I are dealing with. Not so much was it taken out of context, how was it, how did it get to the screen the way it did? And, and again, the advisors had seen this, the Pope's advisors. The Pope was familiar with it. He actually complimented the filmmaker about it. And, you know, as you've seen, one of the situations uh, ha has been that people in Argentina said that those words, convivencia civil, in Argentina specifically, in their dialect, it means civil unions. It doesn't mean property unions or something like that. It means mm. civil unions as we know them. And the other issue is, so what's the problem with with the Pope talking about civil unions and saying that they're okay. You know, I entered into a civil union when I was living in California. Most of my friends and most people I know did that, not because of property rights. They did it because they could not get legally married at that point, and it was the first step. And like so many other things, when we want to change the church, we look at the love and the wonderful feelings that people are having about it along with that, is a major change. It, it really, it was the seed that started same-sex attraction. So we're very sensitive to that. Mm -hmm. and, and the fact that uh, the fact that that there is a confusion, that's understandable. The, the, perhaps the Pope. I'm not saying anything negative about the Pope at all, but perhaps the Pope never meant what came out. But again, I feel. There's such a sensitivity for people with words like, like uh, chastity, with words like obedience, uh, purity. Those are sort of put under under the carpet in general. So, so when the headline said this, you can only imagine how my friends and I felt. I have friends who uh, I belong to a ministry called Courage International, Courage International, and. It is for men who desire in their heart, not because somebody told them, but because the Holy Spirit had somehow touched them, that they desire more, almost more than anything else in the world to become chaste because they want to honor and serve the Lord. That was my experience. 
And I know I have very good friends who actually ch uh, change denominations, Christian denominations. They change Christian denominations in, simply because they felt that the Catholic Church was the last place that would give in to changing the 2,000 years of teaching on human sexuality, especially when it comes to same-sex attraction. And I have a friend who, um, who loves the Catholic Church, and he's saying, you know what? I've been speaking to my Protestant friends, I've been, my family, getting them to be more open to the idea of maybe coming to the Catholic Church just to sit there and see what it's all about. And he said, this just blew the whole thing wide open. And he mm. said, and for me, I now am having second thoughts about being a Catholic. He said, I'd rather go perhaps to an evangelical church. There are mm. evangelical churches that are really true to the faith regarding chastity and human sexuality. But he said, I'm not getting that message anywhere from the Catholic Church. How discouraging, huh, Paul? But you know, I got, I've got to insert here because, and I'm going to use a word that you're very familiar with, because of the joy of the faith, I have no fear for myself. People, a priest were calling me mm. uh, uh, and saying, are you okay regarding this? Wow. And, and, and I said, I mean, several priests that I hardly, I mean, I know, but not the way I know you. And I said, you know, I'm not afraid. I'm, a, I'm worried for all of those other people. You know, I do prison ministry in prison. I have met through the prison ministry or Christian prison ministry. I have met people because of our visiting in the church, became baptized and want to live a chaste life. Do you know how hard it is to live a chaste life when you're a young man in a prison? They're seeking chastity, but yet we're afraid to talk about chastity in the churches mm. in, in, and, and we're wondering when is something going to come out of the Vatican other than, yes, of course, it's clear that neither the Pope nor his, his advisors are saying to change the teachings of the Catholic Church regarding same-sex attraction, but the, the German bishops are blessing same-sex attraction. Churches and altars are being draped with rainbow flags, but when are they going to drape an altar with the chase flag? I don't mm -hmm. even know if there is such a thing, but why don't we invent one? <laughs> you know, I think it, it raises a great point. It seems that uh, as of recent, we, we shy away from the truth. We shy away from, I guess, what was traditionally seen as, as clarity. And essentially charity, right? Um, exactly. In in effort to to bring people closer to the church, but to not give them the full truth. You know what? I my friends and I nobody ever reached out to us and said, "Oh, the Catholic Church is going to accept you." We knew, we felt God was asking us to return to His church, and we went through those doors. We didn't have to go through the back door. Um, we were not scolded. Uh, surely, and we didn't go in with with our ex boyfriends kissing them and hugging them either, or, mm. or wearing uh, a rainbow uh, bandana over our head. I have a list. Could will go through my ceiling and out into the through the roof of things that need to be addressed, mm. that have been addressed, but tangentially, and then it's like one step forward and two steps back, mm. and. Those two steps back are pinning people like me and my friends against the wall. People who love the church so much, you know, having my eyes open to the truth about the real purpose of sexual intimacy, how it belongs, between, according to the way we feel as Catholics, between one man and one woman, really changed my life. And when I was able to see the beauty of the sacredness of the human body, I could never use my body in any way again. Once I really saw, understood that sacredness, I could never use my body in any way again except to honor the Lord. We spent, we, when we were together in uh, where you are, we were together for like seven hours and talked the whole time and it was a blast. And we were like, this is like great. You know how you hang out with those people and and you know you hadn't seen them in a year or something and you just like click and just have so much fun. That was that was our time together. It was Anne-Marie, myself, and Paul. It was so much fun. 
but that, that is like the grace that you can't explain, right? I think that's probably one of the challenges that people find is that, oh, you know, we don't want to say these things because we can't explain. It's same thing with contraception, right? Oh, we don't want to do this because, uh, you don't want to hurt anyone. Yeah. You don't want to hurt anyone. You know, people have had large families and it's been really hard and, and whatever, but God's grace is sufficient. And as you could, as you could hear through Paul, his life has never been greater than, than being chased. And these are the things that we're all called to. We're all called to carry our crosses. And uh, Paul, it's, it's so great to hear from you. This is, we're gonna do several videos on this because I would like to uh, address this. A lot of the comments that I saw were like, oh, you know, I was, I was asking God to, to free me from same-sex attraction and all these things. And oh, you guys are just hating on people and, and whatnot. But no, it's, it's so much more than that. So Paul and I, this will be the first of several that we'll have. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please like it and uh, feel free to share it with others. This is a very um, important topic, right? Because this is what we're interested in the salvation of souls. And really, Paul's, it's just great. You guys would have to see Paul in person. He's just so amazing. And uh, I'm so blessed to have him as a friend. So Paul, uh, really appreciate your, your guidance here and hope it's clarified for those that are watching that, you know, either uh, struggle with same-sex attraction or don't. I think what you've heard in this is that it was really a hard thing to hear and a very saddening comment to come out, whether whatever it meant, right? To not hear exactly. that, no, you're living chastely. Thanks be to God for that. Let's keep going. It's it's more like a, let's see how, uh, how we can make everyone happy, right? We can please everyone, but we really need to first and always focus on pleasing Jesus Christ. So hope you all have a blessed day. The yes. rest will come together. Exactly, as it has in Paul's life. So. And God bless you. Thank you. Hope you all have a blessed day and God love you.